Joining me right now is the commander of the U.S. Northern Command, General Terrence J. O'Shaughnessy. And, General, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Yeah, thank you, Maria. Great to be with you. And, and sir, I'd like to start first by, well, thanking you for your great service to our country, number one. And number two is get your reaction to what the president said yesterday when he said it's going to be a horrific couple of weeks. What does that mean to you, horrific? Well, Maria, I think the president has exactly right. We have some challenging times ahead of us, but I also share the optimism of the panel that you were just talking to. Uh, we are going to get through this. We will prevail. We'll get to a better side on the other side. But it's going to be some tough, challenging times. And what we're trying to do at U.S. Northern Command and the Department of Defense is to bring some relief to some of the local conditions. And so, for example, you mentioned the USNS Comfort in New York City. We also have uh, two Army medical hospitals that have deployed to that same area in the Javits Center. We're trying to build relief for the hospital system in New York City. Uh, we see the same thing in California. We're doing the same thing in New Orleans and, and, and as well as in Dallas because this is all over the nation, not just in New York City. And so we, we're trying to bring everything we can to bear from the U.S. military to help bring relief, help us in the whole of America approach that we see. And I've just been so proud to see the public-private partnerships all the way through the interagency support, the local, state, and federal all working together. Uh, it's actually been, I think, uh, very good to see, and we're going to prevail. It, it's actually extraordinary when you look and you see these sites of Central Park being turned into a, a clinic and a hospital, and obviously the, the comfort uh, ship, which is just dynamic, or like you said, Jacob Javits, the president said we are at war, and that's certainly what it feels like. Tell me, General, how are our first responders feeling? How are they doing? Let's, let, let's look at that for a moment, whether it be our military great men and women or our health care great men and women. Well, clearly our health care workers on the front line, and this is a military operation, as you mentioned. The commander-in-chief has declared a war on COVID-19. That's the way we're approaching it. Uh, we've sent our force out to be part of the solution. But as you mentioned, the healthcare care workers that are on the front line, they're the ones who are doing the heavy lifting. And, and I tell you what, I, I, my, my heart goes out to them. I salute them. Uh, they need all the support they can get. I love to see things like you were covering earlier where the pizzas are being sent to them. But it's more than that. We need to give them everything they need yeah. for them to be able to do the job. It's going to be a tough, uh, tough uh, few, uh, at least couple of weeks, month. Uh, but we, we, we're going to get through it. General, the president yesterday talked about two additional ships coming and potentially being turned into hospitals as well. What can you tell us about that? And are these ships predominantly taking the overflow? Because someone had said to me the other day, look, there are so certain hospitals that can't take in a stroke victim, can't take in a heart attack victim because they're overrun with coronaviruses. So that's what some of these other alternatives are doing, like in Central Park, like the, like the Comfort ship. Yeah, Marie, you have it exactly right. I'll just use the Comfort as a great example. You know, that, that ship is really designed for the high trauma, the high-end care. And so what we're trying to do with specifically with the Comfort is to take those trauma victims, maybe, uh, maybe vehicle accidents, heart attacks, uh, surgeries, uh, the really high-end things that need to be done, and relieve them from the other hospitals, and they can focus on the COVID-19. Uh, just like, uh, as you would imagine, the you know, ship is just uh, close quarters, so tremendous capability, but not necessarily suited specifically for the COVID-19. Uh, and so we see, we see, though, this as being a very important role that they can play. And, for example, uh, in the Mercy on the California mm. side, we've done some intimate surgeries already, some fairly high-end things, stab wounds, accidents, amputees. Uh, it's, it's been a uh, fairly uh, high-end medical care being provided. Right. So are there going to be two new ships? Uh, we're looking at all options, and so whether it be ships or whether it be continued use okay. of some of these transition of other areas. Um, and, and so we're looking at the Department of Defense, looking at all options. In fact, I have a meeting in 15 minutes with the Secretary of Defense to look at some of the other options that we could do with the Department of Defense. But uh, we're in. This is a whole nation approach, whole of America. We're proud to be part of it, just like so many companies and, and other folks are, and again, the, health, the front, front line health care workers. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess because the president said we've got to prepare for the worst. Is that part of this, preparing for the worst, means preparing two more ships to come to become hospitals? Well, again, it's not, I won't necessarily say that two ships will be the final answer. I think what we're, the task that we've been given is we, we're, we're tasked to find what's the best solution to provide support. Uh, for example, one of the things you, you've been highlighting is the grocery stores. 
you know, we have to make sure that those food supply lines are able to get through. And uh, my hat's off to all the folks that, that have to work to make that happen. And so this, this whole of America approach is the right approach. Yeah. Uh, we're part of that, and we will look to bring uh, additional assets to bear on this. Thank you, sir. You make us all proud. General, thank you so much for joining us. We so appreciate it this morning.